why do we have a bunch of tax provisions that are about to expire? And you know, roughly, what would it what would it cost to extend them? Well, when we passed the 2017 tax cuts, um, we meaning Congress, there were two weird budget rules that they had to abide by. One was they had to keep the total 10 year cost as scored at the time below one point five trillion dollars. And the other was they couldn't add to the long term deficit, meaning starting in years 11 and beyond at all. And so to navigate that, they could have, of course, just passed revenue neutral tax reform or even revenue neutral tax reform that had some upfront transition costs. Instead, they passed very expensive tax reform um, and set a number of items to expire starting at the end of 2025. That both reduced that 10 year cost and got rid of most of that long term cost. On top of that, they took some of the pay fors for the corporate tax cuts, the corporate tax cuts they made permanent, by the way, but they took some of the pay fors and they made it so that they grew larger towards the end of that budget window. Uh, the combination of these things fulfilled the budget rules, but it didn't make for a cleaner, stable tax code. And now here we are, I don't know, what are we, seven years later, um, and we're, we're facing down the barrel looking at these cuts. Uh, if we were to extend just the provisions that expire at the end of 2025, and by the way, that includes some tax cuts like lower rates, it includes some tax increases like that $10,000 cap on the state and local tax deduction. Were we to extend all of that, it will cost about $3.4 trillion over the subsequent decade, $3.4 trillion. If we add into the mix um, some health provisions that are scheduled to expire, uh, reversal of some of those business tax tightening that Congress doesn't seem to like, uh, and other things that I think they're very likely to negotiate, we could be talking about something in the $5 trillion range. This is a massive amount of money, right? Think about it. The first bill was $1.5 trillion. Now we're talking about three and a half to five trillion. Uh, it's just gigantic. Uh, what are the uh, just uh, what are some of the big provisions that people might be familiar with? I mean, the, the, when they're filing their taxes, <laughs> uh, some of the things that they might find would change if Congress does nothing. Yeah. So if we do nothing between 2025 and 2026, um, your child tax credit will be cut in half, meaning instead of 2000 per child, it'll be 1000 per child. Your standard deduction will also be cut almost in half. In their place, you'll get the back these personal exemptions you used to have of, I, I don't know, 7,500 or something per person uh, now that there's inflation. But that's instead of the larger standard deduction of child tax credit. Your tax rates will be higher across the board because we cut everybody's tax rates. Uh, if you have a pass-through business or you get income from a, from a smaller, medium-sized business, right now there's this 20% deduction that you can take that goes away. The estate tax, now this doesn't affect very many people, but um, if you happen to be very wealthy and die, um, the estate tax is more likely to hit you and is going to hit more of your um, more of your income. And there's a bunch of other little things. Um, the other big one is your deductions. Your potential deductions will be larger. Uh, you have an uncapped state and local tax deduction, but you're also more likely to end up in the alternative minimum tax because we basically got rid of the alternative minimum tax for almost everybody. So this is a bunch of changes. It's puts and takes. Uh, the the cuts are larger than the takes. That's why the bill cost one point five trillion. It wasn't revenue neutral. But uh, you're going to see a very different tax code in 2026 than the one that's in place today.